Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a directional movement. So in this first video, we're going to be getting the movement working. And then in the next video, we're going to hook up the sprites to our system. Now this video is aimed at beginners. And I am hoping that you have a little bit of familiarity with Game Maker. Basically just that you know what sprites and objects are. So I already have my eight directional sprites. So I got this off a website called Open Game Art. And I'll leave a link to this in the description if you don't have your own art for this already. So I have the eight directions split up into eight different sprites. And you could also do it with just five sprites where you have, for example, up, right, down, and the two diagonals. And then you could just flip those to get the rest of the directions. All right, and to start off with, so I already have a player object. But if you don't, just create an object and assign it whatever sprite you want. And we'll come right into its step event. Right, and hopefully you know what this is, but this is the event that gets called every single frame of the game. So unlike other events like the create event that are kind of once-off events, this one runs every frame. So this is where we want to update the movement. The first thing we have to do for any kind of movement is of course get the player's input. And I'm going to be breaking this down into the horizontal and vertical input. Right, so we're going to be using the right and left keys for the horizontal movement and the up and down keys for the vertical. So the first one we'll get is the horizontal input. So I'm going to call this H input. And now this variable is going to contain a kind of sum of the left and right keyboard checks. And of course we check the keyboard by using keyboard check. And I'll go VK right. And then I'm going to subtract keyboard check VK left. So if you're not familiar with this kind of way of getting the input, the reason I'm doing this is because this function, right, the keyboard check function, what this does is it checks if the player is pressing the right key and then it will return either true or false. And the same with this one. And in Game Maker, true and false is actually equivalent to one and zero. So if we're pressing the right and left key at the same time, then this is going to equate to one minus one. Right, so those will cancel each other out, just like they kind of should if we're pressing both of the buttons. But if we press, for example, just right, then we'll have one minus zero. And if it's just left, then we'll have zero minus one. So you can see we're going to get different values for every single combination of the right and left checks. So this is a valuable piece of information for the horizontal input. So we'll do the same for the vertical input. So I'll just copy and paste that and we'll put V input and then we'll use the down and the up. And the order here is important because remember the X, Y axis of Game Maker, it starts at the top left, zero for X and zero for Y. So if we press the down key or the right key, then we're going to be increasing the X and the Y. And that makes sense because if this side of our little sum, if these two are being pressed, then that sum is going to equate to one which is a positive number, which means we are going to be increasing from where we are currently. And if we're going left or up, then we're going to be going in the negatives, which is what we want. So we have to make sure that these are in this order. So now that we actually have the input, let's apply this to a change in the X and Y position of the player. So now I'm going to go X plus equals H input and Y plus equals V input. That's technically all we have to do to get eight directions working, although when we run the game, you'll see that there is kind of an imperfection with coding it like this. So I already have my room set up, right? It's just a small little room with my player in it. So if you don't have something like that set up, go ahead and do that now. But I am going to run the game and have a look if this is working. All right, so there's my player. It's animating on the spot right now because I didn't turn the animation off or anything. So it's kind of just running through that walk animation. And if I press down and up, I can see that the player moves up and down and left and right also works. And you can see if you press down and left, it does move in that direction, but it moves at a speed that's actually faster than the horizontal and vertical directions. We move faster on the diagonals. And just to illustrate why that is, I'm gonna show you the maths of what we're actually doing. So when we move left and right or up and down, we're moving one pixel in one direction, right? So the total distance we're traveling in one step is just one pixel. 
But if we move at the up left diagonal, then we are moving left one pixel and also up one pixel. And if we draw a line between our first position and where we end up, and then we measure the distance of that line, that doesn't actually equate to one, right? You probably remember from school that that hypotenuse is going to be longer than the sides. So this might not be what you want. We always want that player to be moving one pixel or whatever your speed is. And by the way, if you wanted to actually set a speed, what we could do is just multiply this value times a set speed value. Say times SPD. And I'm using SPD, of course, because SPEED is already a built-in variable, so we can't use that one. And I'm actually going to set that to a small value because my game is very small. And if I just quickly rerun that, you can see that the player now does move slower. But as for these diagonals, we're going to have to use a different method than what we're currently doing. And we're going to be using a bit of vectors. But there are some built-in vector functions for GameMaker that make this really easy. So a vector is just a line with a direction and a length or a magnitude. So what we need to do is get that direction that we want to move, and then we want to calculate the length of that vector if its length was equal to our speed. So for me, that would be 0.5. So once we have that vector, we need to get the horizontal component, which is kind of the distance we need to travel to get to that vector, and the vertical component, because that's how we end up moving in Game Maker. We don't really have true vectors. We're always going to be manipulating the x, y, coordinates. So first off, getting the direction of our vector is actually really easy. And I'm going to call this dir, D-I-R. And this is just called point direction. That will get the direction between two points. And remember, this direction is where we want to move in this one frame. So our kind of change in direction. So we could use the player's x, y position here, but we could also just imagine the player at the origin and then use the h input and v input to show us what direction we want to head in. So the h input and v input is going to be the wrong length because it doesn't matter at this point how long the vector is, we just want the direction that we want to move. And then in our next step, we are actually going to use some functions to get that exact length that we need to move to get the vector that we want. So for the first point, I'm actually just gonna put zero, zero, and then we can actually just use h input and v input, because remember, those were all going to be one, zero, or minus one. And we can actually create a kind of unit circle using those directions. And I'll take this opportunity to point out that directions in GameMaker are exactly like the unit circle. So to go right, that direction would be zero, zero degrees. And to go up, that's 90. And here is everything in between. So let's just fill that in. So zero, zero, H input, V input, right? So that will get our direction. And now with that direction, we need to get the horizontal and vertical components of the vector. And to do this, we're going to use a very handy function, the length to X and Y functions. So exactly as it says here, if we're starting off right here and we want to move there, then our X component of that vector can be calculated with length to. All we have to give it is a length and a direction, and it will tell us how far over that x needs to be to be kind of in the right place for that vector. And the same with the y, using that function. So we could reuse these variables, but just to make it clear what we're doing, I'm going to make a couple more. So I'm going to say move x, which is going to be that x component of the vector, is equal to length to x. And then for the length, we want speed. And the direction, of course, duh. And then the same for the y. And we use those exact same arguments. And now instead of just h input, we can replace all of this right here because we're already using the speed with this function. So now if I run it, hmm, so the player just moves over to the right and I didn't even press any buttons. So why is it doing this? Well, have a think about it. If we're not pressing any buttons, then this is going to equate to zero, 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 zero. 
And if we get the direction of that, that ends up equating to just zero degrees, which we know is to the right. So that's why it's moving off to the right as it is. So what we should do is only be updating the player's movement if the horizontal input or the vertical input does not equal zero, right? So if we're pressing some kind of button or if the checks aren't canceling each other out, because in those cases we should not be moving. So we can just wrap this entire thing in an if check, if h input does not equal zero or v input does not equal zero. So if either of those are equating to not zero, which means we're pressing something, then we can do all this. All right, let's give that a go. There we go. So we're just stationary as we should be. And if we press the buttons now, there we go, we're moving. And you can see when I'm moving on the diagonals, I am still moving as fast as I am on the horizontals and the verticals. All right, so that is it for this video. We have got the movement working, and in the next one, we're going to get the sprites hooked up to our system. I hope you guys are well, and I will see you in the next video.